What's up and welcome to another episode of the Scott and Ian show on the SBL podcast secret goings on at SBL this week. Scott and I talk about it. We also are talking about our relics, a crime. There are certain people that love them, certain people that hate them. Where do we fall? Listen to find out. We've also got our PJ pickups. Any good? I mean, best of both worlds, right? A P pickup, a J pickup. That's like peanut butter and jelly. It's like beans on toast, or is it? We're going to get into it all today. Hey, what's going on at SBL? We have a brand new course uh, on the Academy from Mr. John Patitucci called Duo Performance Concepts, where he goes through what it is like and how he thinks about playing in a duo format, just bass and guitar. Very cool. Very different than rhythm section playing. So check that out. I still need to dive into that because I do a little of that. I'm really excited to watch that course. Uh, We also have a mentor session coming up today, Monday, October 23rd. Danny Mo Morris is in the mentor seat talking about the James Jamerson bass line. Every bass player has to hear. I still need to find out what that is. I got to go check that out. And also next week, Monday, October 30th, yours truly, the A to Z of the greatest bass bass lines ever. I'll be in the mentor's seat doing A to Z of the greatest bass lines ever. We're on letter N. So if you want to have any input on what that is, hit me up on the campus, hit me up on Instagram. Let me know what bands beginning with the letter N you think I should include in the A to Z of the greatest bass lines ever. We also, you guys, you can catch the winners, the winner's announcement for our back to school bass giveaway today on our YouTube channel live at 3 p.m. UK time. That is 10 a.m. Eastern if you don't want to Google it. And you can, of course, rewatch it if you've missed it. Hey, it's going to be a great episode. So much going on at SBL. It's a great time to be alive. It's a great time to be a bass player. Let's check out this episode hey can i um can i ask you if you've ever had this experience before have you ever have you ever i really wanted to say something completely outrageous it's it's inappropriate there Uh, but i did it it's uh (laughs) it stopped wait one sec yeah i was just i was just uh, i just said i was about to say something completely inappropriate there. have you ever had <laughs> I'm this sure experience you were. Like, like, <laughs> well, was vaseline involved like, <laughs> <laughs> dude it's funny you say that because <laughs> let me let me let me say this have you ever shopped for a mattress in a store dude, yes it's you one have? of my favorite subjects. <laughs> yes. It is. Are you serious? Oh, dude. Dude. <laughs> I have got the mattress to end all mattresses. You it's do like not. it's like sleeping on a freaking <laughs> cloud. I like what? float above it. Did oh. you what did you have a great did you go into a store and experience it and the whole thing? Oh yeah. What is it? Dude, here, here's the key. No limit. That's the, like, do you know when you're sort of like, you're talking to your spouse, right? You're talking to yes. Emily and she's like, oh, well, how much are we going to spend on this mattress? My answer <laughs> to Lisa was no limit, <laughs> no limit. We're going to spend whatever it takes because I spend a third of my life on this thing. And on that, that made stupid it, thing. Yeah, and, and that made it awesome. So we were like, yes. no limit. I was like, we're going to go in and we're going to get a badass mattress and we're going to get to, <laughs> oh, it was amazing, dude. It was amazing. And it was worth every penny. It was expensive. It was something like, let me put this into dollars. It was maybe $3,000, which yeah, sounds okay. outrageous. Maybe well, it wasn't no, that, actually, but it, but, it was, it, but it was a lot. That doesn't sound that outrageous to me because we just went mattress shopping and we had a horrible experience, dude. What happened? We had horrible. Oh, I have no. never, let me tell you this. I have never, ever in my life felt more rage <laughs> toward a human being. That's eh, maybe not true, but I, <laughs> we went into a place and there was a dude who helped us and he was the smarmiest, grossest guy that like, dude, we went into a mattress firm 
And oh, dude. no shade you against the, Mattress you went, Firm, you, whatever. You went to the wrong place. <laughs> I know. And there was a dude, there was no one else in the store. And he was like, hey, you two, okay, get on that mattress. And then it felt so vulnerable, dude. You're on the mattress. And he's like, lay on your back <laughs> for a long time. And then you're there. Your keys are on. You've got your phone. And you're, you know, you're just laying down. And the guy is over the mattress, dude. Like oh, dude. leaning over the mattress. Yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. hey. Oh, dude. And then check this out. And then, you know, Emily is like, oh, I don't know if I want a memory foam. I feel sort of like on memory foam mattresses, I feel like I get stuck, like I feel sticky. And this oh, yeah. dude was like, sticky? Oh, oh, no, that's not what you want your mattress to be. Okay. Innuendo number one, we let it go. We're like, ha ha, cool guy. We get it. Eighth grade brain. I got it, too. I I think those thoughts. I just have a better filter than you. And then he's like, you know what I mean? You know, you know. And both and Emily and I, dude. As he's doing this, Emily and I are like in the fetal position on this mattress, and he's I like sticky, you, <laughs> you know. And we're like, yeah, got it. And he's like, oh yeah, I mean, because you probably want to clean your mattress. I'm like, dude, that's in window number two. Three strikes. I stand up. I punch you in the face, guy. <laughs> you know. And then he's like. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, if it's sticky, you got it. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> like, I got up. Oh, man. And, I mean, it didn't come to fisticuffs, but I was like, all right, all right. We, I was we like, go. Emily. <laughs> you need dude, to go to it. Dude, dude, trust me. Yes. Like, mattress shopping is awesome, but you can't go to that place. That's not well, the let me, place. Well, yeah. Look, I, I do have a happy ending. We go to the Minnesota State Fair. Uh and, you know, you don't think you're going to buy a mattress at the state fair, but there yeah. was this mattress place and, and they had all these mattresses and we checked it out and we bought one at the fair and it was a delightful experience. We had a great time. Sales guy was killing. We spent a bunch of money because I agree with you. You got to oh, just yeah. get something great if you're going to be spending your whole life on it. And it's fine. But, dude, I will never set foot in a mattress store or in that one in particular again, ever Ever. If I see that guy, if I see that guy again, I'm going the other direction. <laughs> was the, uh, was, did you end up with, with memory foam? We ended up with a hybrid. We, we, we bought a Stearns and Foster, which I bet if you said in your accent, it would sound so much better than when I say Stearns it. Stearns and Foster. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Stearns and Foster. <laughs> oh, oh, listen, if you would have been there selling me a Stearns and Foster, Stearns and Foster. Oh, Stearns and I would have been, yeah, been a happy guy, man. Yeah, it was cool. It's a hybrid of all the things, right? It's got springs in it. It's got memory foam. It's got a pillow top. It was expensive. It was yeah. the best thing that we laid on. We checked out a bunch of stuff. That was the best one. And now I feel like we should, now I feel like this pod should be sponsored. By by mattresses, come on, Sattva, come through. Come on, Purple, come on, Stearns and Foster. <laughs> oh yeah, come Purple through. mattresses. I can't remember what ours is, but damn, it's it, so it is. It's memory foam, and yep. it's thick. It's like yes. the guy was like, "Oh well, how thick do you want it?" I was like, "Oh, oh baby, how <laughs> thick do they go?" <laughs> you're the one. You're the one dropping the innuendo, making the sales oh, yeah. guy feel a little bit yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, I want a deep pile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, it's great! But it was, it was awesome, man. It was awesome. So yeah, well, I'm gr I'm glad that you sorted your matches out. And anybody listening right now, go no limit, or just go <laughs> to your limit, whatever that limit is. Just go to the limit because it is worth it. There is very, very few things that I've bought in my life that actually have had a true impact on sort of like my day to day. In fact. I would say that no bases come into that category. None. There's no bases. Serious? None. There's no base I've ever bought that came into that sort of like, oh, this actually changed my day to day. Wow, but there's right. only two things that did. Tell I me. bought a fancy ass coffee machine, which I um, loved. I know yes. I do love. Yes. Um, fancy ass coffee machine. I use it every day and it's yes. badass. And then a mattress. That's it. The coffee machine and the mattress. That's it. Everything else I could lose. Everything. I say, Except my family, obviously. You know? I will say you do have a you do have a lovely home. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Oh yeah, the house. The house. Yeah, maybe the house. The house, the coffee machine, and the mattress. 
Oh. Day to day, day to day, you love it. Yeah, you're yeah. happy with those Every purchases. Every single day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when my parents come and look after the house, if we're going on holiday, I'm like, you're sleeping on the mattress, right? My mum is like, well, we'll just sleep in the spare bedroom. I'm like, no, you get on that mattress. You enjoy it because it's awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's great. That's great. And that makes me feel better, too, about spending the money that we spent on this dumb mattress. Uh, because no I am, limit. Dude, I am like of the opinion, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. I could sleep on whatever. But I don't, at the ripe old age of, you know, 44, almost 45, I am <laughs> feeling maybe like that's not true. Wake up and go, oh, dear God, I wonder if, you know, we this mattress is 20 years old that we have right now, right? So it's going to be an improvement. Have you got it in yet? Have you got the mattress It's coming in? on Saturday, two days, two days, dude. If you got the right one, it's going to be life changing. (laughs) Seriously. I hope we got the right one. (laughs) I just sort of like sink into mine. It is like the softest and thickest memory foam you can get. Lisa hates it. (laughs) Oh, she, she she like, because she feels stuck in it. Oh, yeah. yeah I, dude, that's what... Yeah. So, so hold on. Lisa. Lisa's going to have a different story. We got some. One day we're going to get Lisa on this podcast, dude. One day <laughs> Lisa is going to be sat right by you, and I'm going to say, hey, how's that, mad, how's that life-changing mattress? Lisa's going to oh, sing yeah. a different tune, bro. Well, yeah, she changed it. her life, just not for the better. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. She, she goes and sleeps in the spare bedroom. Like, do you know if oh. I want the kids is and she needs to get in with one of the kids or whatever so she'll take them in the spare bedroom sleeps in that double she gets out she's like oh that mattress in the spare bedroom oh it's so nice it's like a freaking plank it is like a (laughs) plank i would rather not sleep than sleep on that thing so you're all about the yeah and you know like i have like a bad i've had a bad back issues in my time right yeah in my 45 years i've had bad and you go to any mattress shop and you're like well you know i've got a bit they always say like, well, you know, have you had any back problems? And like, yeah, yeah, actually, I have got some back problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're always like, oh, yeah, you get a rock hard mattress. Rock hard. <laughs> yeah, Old yeah, yeah. school, right? So I have had that mattress and it was bullshit. Yes. It made it 10 times worse. I was yes. a crip. I was like, oh. Dude, so, yeah. okay. I will say one thing that w- it was a different sales guy, not the creepy one, that said was everybody thinks they want a firm mattress. For some reason, that became like the cool thing. Oh, I, I like a firm mattress. I want to sleep on a firm mattress. He said 90% of the mattresses that get returned are firm. firm. 90%. Wow. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And he said, you don't actually want that. It doesn't actually support. Like if you lay on your, especially if you're a side sleeper, you need something that fills in the gaps, baby. Like that memory oh, foam. I'm a, I'm a side sleeper. I've yep. got my pillow down. I am yep. obsessed by how I sleep, by the way. <laughs> I'm obsessed, dude. I've got the big floppy, like a freaking, like a, yep. a marshmallow mattress. I've yep. got a really nice pillow. I've also got another pillow that's sort of like I lean against. So yes. I'm a side sleeper, but I yep. want to be so of like supported when oh it's great it's like a nest it's like a nest love it love it anyway this is exactly what these guys came along for to hear about my uh, my mattress obsessions but i, I just had to hit you with that man i had yeah. to hit you with it i knew you had i knew you had thoughts <laughs> <laughs> so switching gears we're gonna be talking about a bunch of stuff i'm not sure we're gonna get it down all today because we've got like well we've got a lot oh we have so much to talk about we have um and and the first thing we might as well kick off with secret goings on at spl because we um, actually need we need we need the community's help <laughs> we need we your help we need your help it's true we do we don't know what to call this thing we don't know what to call this thing. So what we're about to launch, well, about is a little bit of a stretch, but what we're going to launch in the next few months um, is looking like the end of November, beginning of December, is probably the biggest upgrade to the SPL membership that we've ever done in the history of the SPL membership. And it's old. It's like in internet years, it's like a granddad. We've been around for a, a long time, coming up for 10 years. It's crazy. Um, yes. Yeah, it's like, it's it's long, right? And from all of that time, we've really focused on kind of, you know, building out the SPL membership, but based on sort of like conversations with students and trying to get our students better results, trying to deliver more value to our students, Um, it became apparent that there was an opportunity for us to create a new type of experience for the, for the students. Um, and I was just literally talking about before we hit record with Ian, um, 
we were talking about, I was over in New York and I was, I can't remember, I was reading the newspaper. I can't remember when people used to read newspapers. I love I was that. reading the newspaper and I've got no idea why in a newspaper in New York, there was an advertisement for a jazz school in San Francisco. Oh, but yeah. there was. But there was. Yep. It was yep. right there in the, you know, and it was, uh, I opened it up and it, I was like, oh, this looks really interesting. And then I went online and checked out. Now, I don't even know if this jazz school exists in San Francisco anymore. Uh, but I went to the website and it was an independent jazz school. And it wasn't a jazz school that you went to to get a degree right. or, you know, a master's or anything like that. It was an independent jazz school. And every single day they ran three to four classes and you could go six days a week to this place it could have been seven actually but you could go every single day you could go to whatever classes you wanted to so you could go to an ensemble class on monday mm. and then maybe you could go to like a theory class on tuesday and an improvisation on wednesday and then maybe sort of like a a composition class and a class on Thursday, or you could go to multiple classes a day. And I can remember re like checking out this website and thinking, this would be my dream. The, yes. Like to have yes. that available back then, because I didn't, and just to, I guess, sort of like go a bit deeper into the story in New York, I was in New York because I was taking part in it. It was like a week long, uh, maybe two week long jazz kind of like summer school, you know, experience, but it was for, you know, uh, like mature students, people over the age of sort of like 20 or 18 or whatever it is, whatever yes. you need to be now to be a mature student. It was kind of people that were doing it in their own time. So what this, and it was amazing. It was actually life changing to me. And what this, uh, this independent jazz school in San Francisco had done is kind of create that experience, but on, on an ongoing basis, and you could pick and choose what classes mm, you could yep. go to. And, I, and I've always thought about what an amazing uh, place that must have been, opportunity to go to a place like that, where you could go to the classes that you wanted to go to, where you could be taught by these, you know, absolutely amazing tutors and get the information that you need to up-level your musicianship. So when it came to asking ourselves and thinking about what we could launch within SBL, that kind of thing over the last few years has always been kind of sort of like cooking in the back of my mind. Yeah. I wonder if there is a opportunity to, you know, do this thing. Um, and then when I was on the interwebs recently, I was on a, there's a great site called open jazz studio and they've got their, they've got their membership and then they've got something called SBL, uh, not sorry, SBL open jazz studio pro and i was like mm. oh that's interesting so i checked it out and i'm like looking at this the, the page where it describes what it is and i was like oh this is exactly like that that jazz school in san francisco where there's multiple live streams every day but the jazz school was actually in person right but open jazz studio pro they're like multiple live streams every single day yep. with all of these great tutors and the students can pick and choose which one they go to. They can look at the timetable for the week. They can go to their favorite tutor or they can dip into sort of like their favorite topic. And it's all included within this open jazz studio pro, right? I was like, Oh, we should do that for SBL. Yes. That's, it, that would be incredible. If we could create that for SBL, that would be incredible because from a student's perspective, they get it all. They get to, as I was saying, go and study with these, like the tutors that they want to t study with, the ones that they really resonate with or do the topics that they really resonate with or even dip their toes into stuff that they haven't done yet. But more importantly, when they get on those calls, it's not like a live presentation. It's like an online virtual classroom yes. where the teacher is speaking <clears throat> to you on Zoom and like doing, do you know, showing them exercises. And then after that, we go around the room and everybody like does their thing. Everybody is like trying to get that riff down or talking about whatever we're, you know, whatever the subject is of that particular class. We're going around the room and everybody is involved in that discussion. So it's actually like a real live classroom experience, but done virtually. And like my kids have, like we homeschool, but they go to a lot of classes like this. They do science like that. They do maths like that. They uh, do history yep. like that, where it's a real classroom experience where the, the teacher 
isn't just kind of giving a presentation and they sit there silently. They're actually all actively involved in that discussion, asking questions, the teachers going around the room, making sure that everybody really thoroughly understands what is going on. And that is what we're launching at the end of the year with an SBL. Now, we don't know what it, whether to call it SBL Pro, SBL Plus, SBL Live. We don't know. But what we do know is that there are going to be three to four live streams, live workshops every single day. Check it out. Six days a week. Yeah. Which means you get like – access to world-class education, world-class educators, and you can pick and choose through the week which ones you want to go to. Like, it's going to be awesome. And you guys, the difference, too, between what Scott was talking about with Open Jazz Studio versus what we're going to do at SBL is Open Jazz was all um, scattered around, is all scattered around different instruments. So it's drums, upright bass, piano, horn, guitar, this is all base. Yeah. This is all so diving into the nitty gritty of technique. I believe that Mr. Scott Devine himself is going to teach technique dojo. I'm going to be yeah. I'm going to be running a class. So we're going to have different classes. So this is what yes. I'm really excited about as well. I'm I'm excited about running my weekly class. I'm going to have students turning up that I'll you know I'll get to actually know you. You yes. know we'll be able to ch- chat and stuff like that. We'll be, I'll be doing a technique class. Danny Mo Morris is doing the R and B. Who else? Right, Danny Mo Morris is so running cool. the the R&B class. We've got Todd Johnson doing jazz standards. We've got so many people involved. It's going to be really, really wild. And oh, I think that just yeah. in terms of the student experience, it's going to be awesome. And, and can I, I mean, I don't want to let out the, the cat out of the bag. I mean, I want to talk about all the classes, but um, there, if you can think about an aspect of theory or genre or technique, it's covered. It's covered. And yeah. um, I'm going to be teaching there as well. I think I'm going to be doing at least one, if not two classes per week, and it's going to be a live practice session with me. So I believe truly in my heart of hearts that we talk about practice routines, but do we actually ever do them? I don't know. Maybe, maybe some of you do, but I am as guilty as anybody of like, oh, here's how I practice. And then do I do that all the time? I don't, but we're going to set up a structured practice where we're going to do it together. I'm going to be playing. We're all going to be playing together, right? And then we'll go around the room. There'll be questions. You'll get to, you'll get to play, demonstrate. I'll give you tips. So to all of you who have reached out to me to say, Hey, can I do one-on-one with you? This is the way. This is the way to do it because I'm going to be super accessible in this program and I can't wait. And I really do think that, you know, if you're like, ah, you know, you've done the a la carte thing a lot, you know, you've, you have access to everything. You can hit YouTube, you can go and find courses. But if you, if you're one of those people that needs accountability, that you need some structure and some accountability and someone saying your turn. But in a yeah. supportive That's way. That's the key not, thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Your turn. Let's yeah. go. It's good. Yeah, you yeah. Need, and you need a little accountability. It, instead of, um, you know, uh, instead of just like, oh, what, on your own time, no problem. Now, some people work really well that way. But I don't. I need somebody saying, come on, Allison, show me. But in a supportive way. And that we're going to build the coolest, most supportive academic structure live for base that's ever been built by by a country mile hey do you know what yeah do you know why i don't think anybody's done it before i don't think it's because it isn't awesome because obviously it's awesome right it's all it's obviously sort of like it's kind of like the ultimate group learning experience yep. isn't it where you get in these small groups of like sort of like five to ten people and you're all learning together with a great tutor right so it's like the ultimate it, it's nobody's done it because it's freaking hard yeah from an operations perspective yep. it's like we're running we're going to be running like 20 to 25 live classes every single week yes it is yeah it's that's why nobody's done it which is which is why i think that there is why it's so interesting because i i believe that the good stuff is always sort of like it's always in the freaking cre- it's always hard to create you know it's it is like, yeah, it, yeah it is. so i do believe that it's going to be awesome like one of the classes i'm really looking forward to as well um is is the listening sessions mm, yes. i 
Yeah. And the, the idea behind the listening sessions is that um, a few times a week, we're actually just going to pick an album um, and we're just going to, as a group, sit, just sit and listen to the album. And I think that that has been lost somewhere in the midst of technology and Spotify and all of these places, you know, how we listen to music. And, and my, my hope is that people will come to these listening sessions and really sort of like, you know, a dip back to that sort of like what it used to be like. And, and I'm not sort of like, you know, like romantic about this, like, oh yeah, let's do, I mean, sort of like, there's a lot of learning to be done from listening Ugh. and then discussing what you've, what you've listened to. So, and yeah, I used to do yes. this with all my friends when we used to live in a shared house in Leeds, we'd listen to these tracks and then we'd all sit there. Like obviously, you know, we were smoking a bit of weed back then, but you know, <laughs> but we won't, but we, but we, but we won't be. It'll be clean on the SPR. You know, I, mean, I, I, I will say though, at, you do what you want at home. You're an adult. You do what you want. Absolutely, do what you want. <laughs> but we used to sit around this. I've got so many great memories sitting around that kitchen table. Um, hey, I'll tell you what. I'll bring a beer. Um, or cider. There you go. There we you used go. To, yeah, we'd we'd sit around that kitchen table. We'd listen to these great albums, and we'd discuss what was happening. We'd discuss our perspective. We'd discuss what we were hearing. We'd mm. discuss what were they thinking when they played that. And that was really, really important for my development as a musician. So that's why we've created these listening sessions within the curriculum as well, so we can get on as a group and listen through these tracks, and then reflect on each track after we heard them i'm just i think it's going to be wild i think it's going to be a great experience oh and we cut out <laughs> are you back yes. sorry yeah we cut out the internet cut out yeah but i just think it's going to be a wild experience so if anybody's wondering like oh, well I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of questions all we'll say for now is well number one we need help we don't know what to call it spl right. plus eh. it's like live. a school ex live pro Pro, I think, makes. I was talking to Peter Martin from Open Jazz Studio, and he they've called theirs Open Jazz Pro. And he said that he he kind of was like uh, considering that they might have labelled it wrong because. Hey, Peter, by the way, I know you listen to his podcast. Pete, we love you. Um, <laughs> such a great piano player, just such a great person as well. Oh, is that the dude? Hold on, is that the dude that did the the short about like um, reharms to get to a new <laughs> yeah, key center? Dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. Holy crap his name's yeah, peter dude, pete P peter martin yeah he's dude a, a, he, he's a freak show he's a lovely you're a monster and what yeah. an incredible I mean freak, educator yeah. i mean freak show in the greatest way right i love freaks. of course yeah ah! yes oh <laughs> yeah, amazing that piece of short form where he went through um if that's the one i'm thinking of and i think it is where he went through like how to how to uh like set up secondary dominance to resolve to new key centers on the piano was remarkable yeah. He, yeah he's a beast yeah Shout but uh, um <clears throat> yeah so so we don't know what to call it we don't know whether to call it sbl pro or like but it's not just for pros that's the problem that's what pete said he was like oh it's not really for pros it's for everybody right, right? so maybe sbl pro isn't the right term sbl plus it just means i'm like huh. you know like when i see like it's obvious what it is but it just makes me i don't know i don't get excited about it maybe SBL you don't plus get excited about it SBL Live, maybe that's a cool thing. SBL School, I don't know. Hit us up with your uh, recommendations. You know, here's on Instagram, or you know, you'll be able to find. If you've got a great, a great idea, you'll be able to find us on Instagram. Probably is the best place, or or email in at support at Scott's Bass Lessons and say, hey, I've got a great name. It should be this thing. Or if you watch this on YouTube, hit us up in the comments as well. If you watch the pod on YouTube, light up those comments, make friends in the comments, get that algo, pump that algo, baby. Let us yeah, know what absolutely. you want it to be called. And I yeah, assume that somebody might be thinking as well, is this an, an additional fee of or, on top of my normal fee for SBL? And the, the answer is, of course it is, because, <laughs> <laughs> because oh, it's going to cost. Yeah. <laughs> We're just doing, Everybody it's just gonna was cost like this. 
Oh, everybody was oh. like this guy. Oh. Because <laughs> it's cost, just to be transparent, it, to run sort of like 20 to 25 live streams every single oh. week, 52 yeah. weeks a year or 50 weeks a year or whatever it'll end up, is incredibly, incredibly expensive. Yes. Which goes to my, my earlier point, which is why nobody's done it. So there will be yeah, an additional fee. But obviously, we're going to, you know, if you're an SBR member, we're going to give you a deal and all of that cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm oh, yeah. really incredibly excited about it and the plan is by the way just in case you're you're wondering as well another question might be well can i just be part of sbl let's call it live now sbl live do i have to be part of the sbl membership can i you know and the answer is to begin with yes we're not going to it is going to be you have to be an, a member of sbl to be a member of SBL Live or SBL Pro or whatever we call it. You can't just be a member of that at the minute. So that's our, our thinking straight out of the gate. But again, you know, we'll keep you updated along the way. I'm really pumped about it. It's coming um, end of November, beginning of December. And I think in terms of, you know, new things that we bring into community, one of the most exciting things that we've done. Like something that I will say is that we've got something in the background that we've been working on for the last six months called The Blueprint. Mm-hmm. New students out there listening to this, you know who you are. Um, and that's also been absolutely incredible. So we've got yes. like a one-to-one mentorship program. Actually, more than a mentorship program, actually. But we've got this one-to-one program. We will talk about that in the future. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, just all that to say that we've got some really incredible programs that we're introducing into SPL. And our methodology is really, just to sort of like close up this conversation, is really to create a value ladder for the students so people can come into the membership and they can if they want more value and more and a, and a sort of like a a, a deeper a clo- experience a deeper experience that's what i was searching for a deeper experience they can ascend up up this ladder this educational ladder that will create create for them and at the top right now we've actually got this you know the blueprint program um and I've even considered, I wonder if there's an actual, uh, I wonder if there's an experience that we, that we can create on top of that, almost like a degree, oh. a d- degree experience. Yeah. But that's, that's not for <laughs> Dude, 2024 for sure. Do you know where my mind went though? Dude, immediately, can you guess where my mind went? We, where, oh, you know, the experience that even beyond Race that, cruise. you know what it is? Yeah, Race dude. Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I want the SPL cruise so bad. Yeah, dude. dude oh, yeah. dude, I want it so bad. Someday, yeah. Scott Devine, can we please get on a cruise ship, play bass, and uh, and and just like eat food and hang out and show each other bases and riffs and have clinics and oh god, dude, I want okay, it so, so I, bad. I will say this: that I think that so this this sort of like value ladder approach that that i've been thinking about and we've been talking about for a long time um i think that the experience does involve community so i think it does involve you know we've got the spl membership and then spl live or plus or pro whatever we call it and then i'm also envisaging is there is there a a certification courses as well we've got blueprint is there something that sits on top of that that's where we're like oh this is this is like a, a year long or 18 month long program where we're actually trying to create more like a degree experience. Yeah. Um, so that's, but then I also do think that there are live experiences that we can create alongside those uh-huh. as well. And I see those as two, two pathways for that. Number one is uh, like smaller group clinics that would last anywhere between yep. three and four days. Yeah, three or four days. Um, and, and it's probably topped out at maybe 30 people per session. So no more than 30 yeah. people. Um, maybe running four of those a year. I think that there w- maybe there's an opportunity there um, to create sort of like a new experience for the students. But then also I do flip with the idea of doing sort of like, could we, like there was something called the London Bay Show. It was awesome. And it doesn't happen yes. anymore. And there isn't one that happens right. in the States anymore. And Bass Player Live doesn't happen anymore. There is a void in the bass community know, right now. That there's a void. And I do think that we should create something that, that fits within that. Like, well, let's bring it back. And if anybody's thinking, yeah, all of these ideas are great. Why aren't you doing them? And it's just because it actually just takes a lot of time and resources to plan this stuff out. <laughs> that sure does. You know, it just, just like, damn yeah. these guys like Elon Musk and stuff who just sort of like, you know, just kicking off companies left, right, and center. 
obviously they you know they've they've got something i haven't got obviously right but it just takes a lot of time money and resource to actually create these things and get them out there like we are completely bootstrapped we're a bootstrap company we've never taken any funding from anybody outside right so that's right all of the resource that we create all of the you know that gets fed back into the business to do this so you know we're really excited for the future but all of the things that obviously i've mentioned sbl plus pro alive whatever we call it we need your help that's coming uh the end of november beginning of december but uh, but to kick all of those other projects off as well is going to take you know probably i would say 18 to 24 months that's what sure you know a year and a half two years to to get all of the spin all of those up maybe maybe longer maybe longer maybe three years but uh yeah we're putting to no, but, uh, we're putting the roadmap together it's going to be wild yeah it's going to be wild dude it's yeah. going to be wild i think it is um, yeah do you do you speaking of speaking of wild i'm just trying to do a sag right now speaking of wild is do you feel like you want to talk about a shiny <laughs> yeah, yeah like a shiny new beautiful base that doesn't have a mark on it that you that you are worried about like that you, you know you take off your jacket dude maybe before the gig right you're like oh i hope i don't hit the headstock on the symbol and it's pristine and beautiful yeah or is there something about a finish that comes pre-battered pre-aged you say that in the uk battered, right yeah. pre-aged yeah, pre th- uh, that's that's given a proper thrashing our before it goes out cr- into the our market. Relics that a- <laughs> crime. Oh. Our relics a crime. Our relics a crime. I'm gonna write it, that down. Like that. Oh yeah, write it down, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, yeah? Do you prefer that just shiny new thing that's perfect, or do you want to have a little grime from the factory? Are relics a crime, Scott Devine? Are they? Um. To some people, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. They get very offended. They get very, they're just hideously offended by them. They, you know, and I'm not disagreeing with them. I think it's just sort of each to their own. But yeah, to some people, it drives them crazy. Crazy Round town. the bend, Round the bend. as you would say. Yeah, crazy town. Yes. They get really pissed off about it. Um, to me personally, I put these, I put relic instruments in the bracket of like ripped jeans. Right. You can have ripped jeans, you know, hey, you can wear them jeans if you want and just, you know, crawl around on all fours for like, you know, for I don't know how long it might take, you know, a while, right? You can do that if you want to do, you know, if you want to. Or you can buy some pre ripped jeans. I do not own any pre ripped jeans, but I have done in the past. And when I wore them, sure, they felt good, you know. A bit of, yeah, bit of extra stretch in the knee. So, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I do not have a an issue with relics. I will say that, um, in fact, I own what I I believe is the greatest P base relic on the planet. It, I, it's insane. I think it is. I actually own that base. Yep. You know, but yeah, the P the P base of doom and. Yeah. Yes. And if you don't know, I mean, that Scott played that bass um, for a long time on the channel. It still shows up occasionally. It has a Mulan neck on it, which is just a, yeah, ah, oh, it just got me. It's a dagger, dude. Um, oh, it, it just goes against everything I have aesthetically. You look at that body. Oh, Fender. Oh, this beautiful relic. It's like white and red and oh, blue yeah, and yeah. green somehow. It's insane. Yeah. And then you travel up the neck and it doesn't say Fender on the headstock and it's a different shape and it crushes my soul dude (laughs) neck plays great though (laughs) yeah it does it sure does yeah yeah it sure does and you guys if you don't know what we're talking about um and you watch just briefly i have i have this base here made by saku viore voren saku and this one is lightly relict and you can see you know there's like a a divot here right and if you can if you're looking at the paint there's you know some bumps and bruises and checking which just means you know that if you use a lacquer the finish has you know small cracks not in the wood but in the actual lacquer itself and it's as if right um this instrument has been around a long time yeah and i think yeah and i think um more than just aesthetically too there's something about an aged finish 
that, well, let me ask you this, Scott, do you feel like an aged finish has something to offer more than just aesthetics? Yeah, the feel of it. Just the feel. Like, is that the thread that you pull it on? Like, I do. I think that it just feels, for me, does it feel better? Yeah. Comfy. It's maybe like a little less glossy. It's a little less, you know, yeah. I'll tell you what, it definitely I know does. What you mean. It, it removes any anxiety about knocking the base. It does. It absolutely yes. does that. Because when you knock yes, it, it, does. it adds to it. It's like, ooh. Wicked. Exactly. Whereas when you knock the, when you knock the <laughs> polish base, you're like it, it hurts your heart. You're like, oh, oh. Shit. the first knock on that. Oh, <laughs> it's like oh, somebody, it's brutal. It's like, somebody like stabs you in the heart. It's awful. Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah. I guess that yes, I agree. The thread that I was pulling on is there something where there's a you know if there is a thin. Uh, nitro finish on an instrument like this that is sort of worn. Do you feel like that contributes tonally? Does it open the <gasps> instrument up? Because sometimes no, people it, say people that. Do, be, yeah, people t- do say that, yeah. And some people that I really respect as well, um, they they have said that, like Mitch, who, do you know Mitch who plays Olivas and F basses? You know Mitch. I can't remember his surname. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. What's his. Uh, uh, Mitch the bass player. On Instagram, but he's no, on Ruto. No, that, no, that's no, the Mitch. Not that guy. Oh, different Mitch. Different Mitch. Different. Um, let me uh, let me get Mitch's name. Mitch Starkman. Yeah, Mitch's you name. know Mitch Starkman. I, I I don't know that I do. Have you I seen mean, him maybe play? I've seen him on Insta, but have you seen him play? I don't know if I have. Oh, he's ludicrous. He's ludicrous. He's just sort of like yeah. He's just ludicrous. Mitch, 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 I'll check you out, man. Check him out. He's a beast, man. Mitch Starkman, yeah. He, like, I've talked to Mitch. So what I was going to say is that I have not had the experience of sitting with a poly base and a nitro base. Sorry, like poly finish and a nitro cellulose finish, two different bases. Yes. And actually A, B in them in terms of tone. Mitch has. He like he's sort of like he's a super geek when it comes to this kind of stuff. And uh, yep. and he said that like nitro is the way to go. And I've heard other people say that nitro is mm. the way to go. So I haven't had that experience, but I'm not going to call bullshit on anybody else that has because I think that you know it might yeah. be that their ears are more developed than mine, or they they've just spent more time a b in them and haven't had more experience with them. So yeah. So, and the yeah. idea, right, is that like if you cover a piece of wood with plastic, which is essentially what you're doing with a poly finish, that it maybe sort of keeps the vibrations. It sort of chokes the base slightly, yeah, right? Yeah. And that if you cover a piece of wood in a nitrocellulose finish, which sort of breaks down over time, that maybe the wood is less restricted. I think that is hooey. Do you not? Do you, do you think it's no? <laughs> I mean, I don't care at all. I, um, I'm way more into the aesthetic, like a nitro base is going to get beat up. And I think if that's what you want, that's nitro is amazing for that. So for aesthetic, um, of a beat relic thing, nitro obviously is the way to go, but on an instrument like a Yamaha BB or a Mike Lull or a specter, something that like leans more of the polish, vibe architectural i don't know or like automotive but in a in a polished sort of uh-huh, way uh-huh. not beat up old truck poly all day long all day got long got it yeah, um, yeah. and and that's but that's just you know that's just me yeah that's me it's tough i don't it? feel yeah. like i don't care about the slight tonal difference that a finish might uh, might impart. I care more about the aesthetic of the instrument. Yeah, I will. Personally. I will say that I'm drawn to relic instruments more from a sort of a yeah. from an aesthetic standpoint. When I see them, I'm like, "Ooh, Ooh. that looks gorgeous!" <laughs> yeah, like it's it's just, yes. there's just something about it. Just that. So, and I'm not right. really sure what it is, but it just ticks some kind of box, and it's like, "Oh, I, I love that. that." Yeah. So, but let me ask yeah. you. Dude, let me ask you one more question, though. So, okay, so there's there's then this idea, though, of, like, 
relic versus real wear, right? Yeah. Like you're talking about with jeans. And if you're watching the pod, this is a 1978 Antigua jazz bass that I love. And if you don't like this color, I don't trust you forever. We can't be friends. Just kidding, <laughs> but not really. And, uh, and, and this huge chunk of white that was revealed on the um, on the edge of the base, it's like the white undercoat of the paint. Yeah. That was all me. When I bought this base, there was a tiny little bit of white showing through. And then I have played the hell out of this thing and worn all of the odd sort of Antigua greenish gray, yellow, whatever you call this finish off down to the white. And that there's even a spot here where I'm wearing down through the white onto the bare wood. And I have to say that feels cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. to have like done it yourself feels cool. I always pick it up by the neck heel too. Yeah. And so there's a big, huge chunk of white here, right? Where it sits on my lap. There's a huge chunk of white here. And this is the, a base that I have just put the hours in on that has worn to me. Yeah. And that's, and, and this is poly, this is not nitro. So this is not an easy finish to wear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and dude, there's something kind of dope about earned. Well, it's, it's like you know the I mean? when you jeans, get that ice it? cream and you've bought it yourself. It's the ripped jeans. Yeah. Like ripped jeans that you are actually, you know, you've made those holes in the knees, right? They're always going to be comfier mm -hmm. than, than bought ripped jeans for the most part because the, you'll have just worn them in, and you'll have it, it'll have, it's a different process that the base goes through. So yes. I do really love um, naturally worn instruments. Especially, 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 I've got a real soft spot for early sixties P bases. The fit when oh, you get, better. yeah, when you get a great one finish on them, it's ludicrous. It just, it's so yes. thin. The finish is so, it's just like, oh, <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, I've got a soft spot for them. Um, I also will say that when it comes to relicking, it's easy to look at photographs on the internet and and be like, oh yeah, it's a relic. Oh, it's a heavy relic, whatever, yeah. right? When you see them in person, they there is a a, a real spectrum of skill set when it comes to doing a relic. So dudes, thank yes. you. That's a very good point. Yes. Yes. And it, you, I don't, Talk about that yeah, a little bit. I don't think that we can um lump all of the people that relic bases i don't think we should lump them together because some people are yes there's a is it called art relic let me just have a look there's a guy in france who actually art relic guitars relic art guitars yes it's called like art like relic art a-r-t yeah and the the um I'm going to spell out the uh, the URL because you're not going to find it otherwise. It's relic, which is spelled as you'd expect, and then art, A-R-T, and then guitars is spelled G-U-I-T-A-R-E-S. Okay? G-U-I-T-A-R-E-S oh, dot F-R. This guy just... Oh, God. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, now, Michael... Okay. Bado or Bado, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. He this is what he does. So he actually specializes in relic relicking modern instruments. And just as it says relic art guitars, the art bit is really important to that statement because what he's doing is actually creating yes, it art. Is. It's beautiful what he's doing. It's yep. absolutely gorgeous. So you have individuals like this guy on one end of the spectrum, and then you've got other people on the other end of the spectrum that don't really know how to relic an instrument. And I don't That's think right. that we can lump these together. I think that they're actually very separate. So cheaper, yes. cheaper relic. I the, the relic that Fender, the uh, the Fender P that I've got, the base base of doom. That is, I'm not just saying it because I've it's mine. It is the best relic job I've ever seen on any instrument. It, it really is. I've never seen an instrument as good as that. And I'm because I own that instrument, I kind of know all of the things to look out for where you're like, ah, oh, 
you can see that this is just uh, this is this yeah. just like whatever yeah. you just sort of like made someone some took chips. a chisel or yeah yeah it's when <laughs> yeah. you see the lacquer has to be cracked it has to have that checking on yeah. it has to be cracked it like there's various things the the great people when they do it put multiple layers like sometimes like different colors so they like different colors come through like there's you know yeah, there's sure. levels to it i think it's I like to think of it as art. I, I think that there are, I it's a, a very artful thing to do. And I think that um, it can add a different character to, to, to the instrument itself. I really, I really love it. And um, yeah, and I'm kind of going through this experience at the minute. I've got this secret project, <laughs> another secret project. Oh, I've got like a you? secret project. And I'll tell you who, <laughs> who, who I'm in discussion with, like on a different part. You will. I will. I will. Okay. But right now, I'm <laughs> right. speaking to an individual <laughs> who uh, mm. happens to make great basses. And we're yes. talking about a custom P bass. Um, and, and I have to sort of like hat tip to you as well. You know, I, I did this album. I like I do. Done the album. There's a whole. I'm going through a whole yeah. lot of different sort of like emotions around this, uh, or maybe emotions is the wrong word. But I did the album, and I love what the out the output is. Uh, and right in the yes. middle of recording it, you were like, "Divine, don't forget your roots. Don't forget about the P bass. Do not forget." And I was like, "Whatever, Alison. Whatever." <laughs> and then. Like upon listening to the album, and I really love the tone that I've got on the album. I'm sort of like eighty percent, seventy, eighty percent happy with it, and that's no sort of like shade against anybody. That's just I'm a. I don't think I'll ever be happy with hundred percent with anything ever. Ever. Sure. There's always room for improvement in terms of like me, who I am as a person. So I'm like, yeah, it was good, but I do wonder. I do. I think I should have played a P on some of those tracks and. And I'm still searching for my sound. And there is something, I don't know, there's something that I'm kind of like, yeah, I need a, another project, basically. I think that that's what I'm getting. My, my plan is to uh, do another project with Simon. And I think on that, that the new project, the new project that'll be coming up, shout out, by the way, we're releasing the album uh, at the end of September, beginning of October. If you've been waiting to hear about awesome. it, that album, the first volume one, Divine King Project is coming out end of september beginning of october so keep a lookout for that and we have tra transcribed everything for you guys everything i can't believe and that <laughs> we've given away all of the tab notation for free so we're giving away awesome. all of the tab notation for free um, and members if you're a member of sbl i've also just recorded nine completely like awesome workshops that cover the entire album i teach you every single track each lesson is about like 40 to 50 minutes long so you're going to get a complete Incredible. breakdown of the entire album i'm going to teach you how to do it you and also, it rips yeah. dude it rips it, the album yeah. rips it is what it says it's on the back awesome. it's fully fusion isn't it yeah but yes it is so the album again it's coming out end of october end, end of september beginning of uh big beginning begin of october and you know if you remember you're going to get all of the tutorials as part of your membership with all of the backing tracks as well and obviously all, and all of the tab and notation if you're not a member we're also going to make just the tab and notation available for free as well and i say just the tab and notation it's a completely we've put an ebook together for the album we're giving it away for free so we'll keep you updated on where you can get the ebook so keep a lookout for that but for the next project i'm really thinking about doing it on a four string p bass <gasps> four string wow yeah, four, string. four string and i'm in talks with somebody i'll reveal at a later point about um developing this instrument and something i've really been trying to figure out is is it a poly finish or is it you know mm -hmm. is it a relic job is it you know are we are we pre-aging it and i have i have some kind of ideas that i want it to look like a, a body a bodied bass like imagine that's if, cool imagine if you got like a 60s p bass right and you modded it before before it was stupid to mod it right so you modded it let's, <laughs> yeah. let's say you modded it in the 80s so maybe it's got like a a badass style bridge on it maybe it's got sure, maybe it's right. got like a bridge bridge pickup as well so it's like a pj i've got some interesting thoughts about pjs at the minute um I yeah yeah I'm, I'm like i'm just you know we we should talk about it in uh well in, in detail i, in I can't wait episode, but yeah 
There's Let me just over. say that I think I know who you're talking about. And <laughs> I happen to know that both styles of finishes that they can do are remarkable. Yeah. Both styles are remarkable. Yeah. Um, I think too that, well, first of all, I'm so excited about you like figuring out, you know, you wondering about a P base again and kind of maybe taking the P base idea and pushing it for you. Maybe it's PJ, maybe it's, you know, the, the certain mod elements. I love that. And I think that I think if I know who you're talking about and I think I do, I think you're going to be happy. And I think it's going to be a super, super sick instrument. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. I, Can I just say something dude, about PJs and, and, that I read somewhere, please. by the way? Because I've yes. never been like a PJ guy. And I think it twigged. I was reading something on the internet. It was like on Talkbase or something like that. And everybody's sort of like, um and now we're about PJs. We've talked about PJs before. This guy just seems yeah. like, steams in and he's like, dudes, the PJ is just it's one or the other. It's not like a, he's like, you get a P bass and you get a bridge pickup and a jazz bass. That's what yes, you get. Right. They're the two stock two, sounds. Two things. Two, two sounds. Yes. You don't, he, and his take was like that mid, that sort of like, you know, mixing both pickups. And I think I said this to you sort of like a few days ago. He was like, eh, kind of like a jazz bass, but not as cool. But what you do get is you get a real thoroughbred right. thoroughbred P bass sound, and you get this biting True. bridge pickup as well. And there are people yes. out there that have done an incredible job of that. You know, like Jeff Andrews played a PJ bass, um, and he just used yep, the, the bridge right. pickup, and his sound is bonkers. Uh, Incre- yeah, he just yeah. used that bridge pickup, dialed huh. back that tone a bit, sounds killing. But then you also have the P pickup that you can sell on its own as well. So yeah, true. Do you know, I, I will say this though, a PJ sound that I love, and I'm not going to attribute it to any bass brand, but I'm going to attribute it to a pickup brand is it EMG uh-huh. is a classic, not EMG X, not any of the new, but the classic eighties EMGs that were PJ that Fodera used that Spectre used yeah. the classic eighties EMG PJ uh-huh. to me is like an unbelievably cool sound when it's combined. Yeah. Uh, I will, and can, the internet I, froze again. It's all, yeah, my internet oh, froze as well. My internet froze as well. I will say that EMGs, like, I don't know why, but they, they, they don't sound like what you think they're going to sound like. I, I've gone on that sort right. of like rabbit hole of listening to people on YouTube kind of like, here's a Bartolini sound, here's an EMG sound, here's a sort of like stock fender p bass uh, yep. like p bass pickups and when you listen to them you i always think oh the emg ones are going to be like maybe a little sterile maybe a bit sort of like i don't know what i'm expecting but when i hear it yeah it's not that it's not that i'm I like know. oh yeah and yep. the obvious ones i'm not going to mention any, any brand names actually but I'll, i will say that emg and bartolini are not the obvious sort of like in pickups at the minute right but when I, exactly yeah that's true but when i hear them a bead i actually really like them in fact i really like some, I know. some bartolini ones as well i love the emg same love the bartolinis and check this out i was listening to yesterday there was a great great video uh it went in terms of a b videos between i'm not going to say it was like a very hip pickup manufacturer one of those yeah, i mean there's various yep. ones it was a hip hip pick, yes. pickup manufacturer versus a 63 fender uh um, vintage pickup that, that that you can buy as sort of like a retrofit replacement they're, they're like 60 yes okay 63 got it. vintage that was for me that killed the other pickup it sounded the 63 yeah, the fender 63 production fender, pickup, production yeah. pickup. Yeah, it killed it's a killer it. pickup it killed it yep, i know the other one sounded Dude, like I know. square and it sounded like square and harsh the mid-range wasn't right for a p-base it just didn't do that thing at all yeah dude i have a friend who bought uh, i had a 63 p base in that like white or maybe it was even like a pale daphne blue or something but super pale almost yeah, like white yeah. um and he bought it and he took that pickup out and he went through 20 different pickups i swear to god he just put every single well, he had option the 63 in it, in it. 
He had the 63 yeah. in. He bought the bass from me. I, I, he was a student of mine at North Central. Shout out Joe Harrier, the low carrier. Hey, Joe. Making waves in Nashville right now, dude. Joe's a badass. He bought this bass. Maybe not 20, Joe. I, I, probably, I probably exaggerate. But I bet Joe put 10 pickups in this thing, right? Yeah. And then went back to the 63. In fact, just texted me not long ago and was like, dude, I put the stock pickup back in and it's magic. I, you know, but sometimes you got to go through that process, dude. Sometimes you got to go through it, yeah. right? Yeah. Where you're, where you're modding and putting in different stuff. Um, but yeah, he went back to the stock and, uh, and said it was the way. So what about other PJ, uh, what about other PJ, um, pickups have you tried that jumped out to you? I'm, well, okay. So I love EMGs, uh, but but I think that's because of the way they're balanced. I think another instrument that's really cool is the 80s Fender called the Jazz Bass Special. I mean, I have one over here. It looks like um, a, it's a PJ. It's the Duff McKagan bass. Yeah. Bakiti Kumalo used one with Paul Simon, too. Um, it's it's really interesting. The pickups they had specially made for it. They've never done those same pickups in any other bass ever. They're really hot. Um it's a it's a sound. I don't love the sound of it actually, but but like when I hear Duff play it, I'm like, Got yes, it. that's that's, that's yeah, awesome. When I hear Bikiti yeah, play yeah, it, yeah. you know. But when I play it, I'm like, I I kind of the PJ thing for me, especially in Fenderland, I just sort of I want to just be playing a jazz or a P. I don't want to have them both combined. But I like that you're trying to solve this. I like that you're trying to solve this riddle, dude. I I'm like it. I like riddle. that you're doing I, it. I'll tell you why Why it's interesting. Because, like, visually, I'm all about the P. I'm just like, give me the P. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not like, you know, give me a PJ. But I do like the idea of, I've been in certain situations where it is harder with a P base just a P-based pickup, especially in certain mm-hmm. scenarios where you kind of need to cut through the mix and I can't. Yes. And, and it, wouldn't it be cool for just those few moments that you've got like another pickup just to sort of like, boom, switch on, dial back that yes. tone and you can cut right through the mix. You can get that, that kind of like, well, you know, all of the guys that are sort of, you know, that you hear nowadays that sort of like shred infusion type stuff. In general, it's all sort of like back pickup, you know, tone slightly dial back. That's the kind of right. vibe with it. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great yep. if it just had that in it so you could access it if you needed it? Yeah. Well, uh, yes. And I think there was a time in my life where I was playing jazz basses. I was playing active jazz bass made by Modulus. And it was yeah. Bartolini, passive Bartolini pickups, but attached to an active pre. And my favorite sound in that bass, someone was reminding me of this, like, dude, you used to play. Because I was like, oh, I've never been a bridge pickup fan. Well, that's not true. There was a time where, for me, the bridge pickup sound would be back to bridge if if not all the way a bit and then a bunch of bass boost because for me the bridge pickup thing without some support in the bottom is really hard for me to place in a mix yeah so yeah. if i were designing a pj circuit that i didn't want to think too hard about i would want to balance the pickups in a way where the bridge pickup gave a higher output than a standard bridge pickup to match with that P because for me, when I flip to that back, I've, I've been on the P it's big, it's huge, all this bass. Now I flip to the back pickup uh, 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 and it's smaller and it's quiet. And Oh my God, now I've got to reach down and adjust my, or turn around and get the amp. No, I want a system where I flip to the back. It has a preamp built into just maybe that back pickup setting that bumps bass up a touch and maybe potentially dials treble back. Maybe that's sort of built into the design of the pickup, but I think it could be a preamp thing as well, yeah. where you've got the perfect P bass thing that's like mid rangey, fendery. Yeah. But yeah. then when you pop back, it's kind of like Lean's Fodera or something, where yeah. it's like yeah, exactly. a preamp yeah. Yeah. that's boosting bottom and maybe dialing back high end, but maybe you don't have all that control on the front of the bass. I don't know, but you, you sort it out, you know, there's trim pots in the back, maybe you adjust them and it's, and it's perfect. Yeah, That's dude. what I would yes. want is settings like click vintage neck or vintage P bass and then click. Oh, modern fusion 
Yes. Back pickup. Yeah. That's, or at least if I was designing a product for you, if I was in product design for you, I would pitch that to you. I guess I just have. You are. You pitch it. That's what I would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the vibe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I think it's really interesting. I th- honestly, I think it's really interesting because it's, I love yeah. the, we, well, we've, we've talked about this before, right? When we're playing live, boom, stick it on the neck pickup. You know, exactly. You know, I always and everybody's up, happy. Yeah. Right? I always end up on the freaking neck pickup. You know, like, yes, but in the studio situations, I, it was really, there were definitely things where I needed, I just needed that bridge pickup to play the melodies that I played in that specific way. Now there is a debate whether if I just had a P pickup, if I just had that P pickup, whether I would have, you know, just leaned in and done it a bit differently. But I think that mm. it's, it's a journey that I'm going on and I think that it's going to be, a, I, know, I think it's going to be, a, love it. I think it's going to be a fun base to, to develop. And there are oh, also cool. a bunch of different things that like taking that two instrument approach as well. That's kind of interesting to me. So for instance, with my F bass, do you know the bridge pickup, the, the, uh, it's a single coil. Uh, do you know the yep. curvature? Of the, it follows yes, the radius. Yep, the radius. It, that is so yep. important to me. It's ah, so yeah, important yeah, yeah. to me. Yep. So yep. maybe on this P base, I'm gonna. You're gonna be like, whoa. Maybe on this P base, there is. Have you seen a? That's awesome. Have you seen a PJ right where it's mm-hmm. a? The bridge pickup is actually a dual coil. Have you seen a PJ with a dual sure. coil? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I actually prefer single coils to dual coils, but yep. I could have a dual coil size pickup but cur- housing housing so a single oh, coil yeah. but with an actual with a curvature made to, to like suit the, sit, sit with the strings like that so when Very i'm back cool. on that bridge pickup and i want that like kind of like federi f bass bridge you know jazz bass sound yeah i go back to there my fingers are going to be right over that pickup it's going to give me that real punch big playing through. surface big playing surface like a two yep. two mil just underneath the string so i've got like it feels like a ramp yes and then with the bridge with the, with the neck pickup i can boom switch on the neck pickup and then i've just got a big fat p bass sound right you know oh. exactly so that's the that's the thread i'm pulling on dude dude the sd sig it's coming yeah it's coming, yeah, it's coming. somebody's gonna build it Somebody is going to build it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. What do you think? Oh, do you, that sounds so exciting. Just let just let me ask you this one question, product master. Please. Product master. Please. Because yes. you're good at this stuff. It's it, like if it's a modded base, if if we sort of like fly this flag of like, oh, this is yep. this is imagine you get that 60s P base, but it's just modded yep. to death. Does it yes. does it need to be a relic? I think it kind of does, doesn't it? Does it? I think that I think that helps tell the story. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, you know, it's it, the thing that Fender leaned into, like road worn pawn shop, yeah, like yeah, that thing. Yeah. I think that's a cool thread to pull on. This would sort of be a boutique version of that. Yeah. I think the relic would help would help tell the story of the instrument. Um, and if I if if I know the company that you're talking about, they have an incredible incredible handle on how to do that right oh, they do, to where yeah. it's subtle yeah they do yeah. but not crazy um and and i will say too it really takes players i think um the best the best relicers are not necessarily the best finishers i think the people that do the best relic jobs are players yeah for sure. that really that know how an instrument is worn that know as they're sanding uh, that would be taking it a little too far you know, or like, uh, that wear pattern in this location of the base is not right. Yeah. Shout out to somebody who I think does this incredibly well. I mean, I showed that Vorin Saku base I have, I think Saku really knows, but someone else who really knows is Vince at the Fender custom shop, Vince and Ventrick. Oh, I dude. think he, yeah, dude, oh, Vince, Steve. Vince, shout out to you, Vince, uh, Vince VVT, baby, Vince and Ventrick volume, volume tone. Come on, baby. <laughs> he is killing yeah killing vvt in the fender custom shop does this so well and he does uh subtle stuff but he can also do heavy 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 relic stuff that doesn't just look stupid um yeah and it's man it's 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 very subtle it's very subtle there i have a couple of fender cs's from a bygone you know from years and years ago that i wish vince would have done because some of the stuff on it i'm like come on i can i can tell that this 
you know, like there's nail, there's nail scratches. I have a pit guard that has nail scratches around volume tone. That's cool. Yeah. And then also around the output jack. <laughs> like, like, you know, like someone who was relicking the guard saw the three holes and just did the scratches around the three holes and then installed it on the base. And there are not circular scratches around an input jack yeah, on an yeah, instrument. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 and I yeah. feel like that's the stuff that the the players don't screw up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because it's, it's the obvious and, stuff that only they would know, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What, one Hell last yeah. question. One last question then. Yes, please. If I wanted, like, and I'm, I'm not, like, totally saying that it would be a relic. I'm, I'm kind of, like, really on the fence with it. I'm like, eh, I'm not sure. But if it wasn't going to be a relic, if it was... Okay, here's the question. <laughs> I'll get to it. I'm, I, I can't wait. Here's the question. Okay, I I kind of want to. Th- I think I want to go with a roasted bird's eye maple board on it. Um, does that mean I can't have it relicked? No way. No. No way. You can absolutely have it relicked. In fact, I think roasted leans really nicely into because you can. Here's what I would do. I would vintage tint it. So. Um, you do the roasted board and if, if you want to put a finish on it, you can vintage tint it or you can vintage tint nitro the back of the neck and have it sanded in a way that gives a little bit of wear. Yeah. But so you lean into that caramel color in, yeah, instead yeah. of, you know, instead of having it be, in, in fact, I think roasted leans better into relic than not roasted because not roasted is that really sort of bright kind of blonde maple color. Yeah. Yeah. But when you have roasted, it kind of is that ambery delicious Jurassic park, uh, (laughs) mosquito in the, in the (laughs) amber, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that I think looks fantastic on a relic instrument. So I think you're, you're barking up the right tree, sir. My other idea was just no finish at all on the body, just oiled just sort of like, oil mm-hmm. maybe put yep. a color on it just like keep it really simple just sort of like i don't know but, yep. but it's an older body i think that it needs an older body because without the older body you don't get that p bass sound that i i hear <laughs> you know it's like okay. yeah i really want that older body so maybe it's just like yes. a, a plain older body with an oil finish on it or something like that and one of those beautiful aged tort guards you know on the like spit oh yeah, yeah of course like, spitfire yep, do yep. them or Spitfire Lava. Yeah, Lava's another Lava great company well. doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, that's totally cool. I mean, my aesthetic, I, I love painted and then relic the paint. I think it's hard to get a relic across where, if it's just a natural body, but there could be something cool. Like, you know, what might be really cool is like you do something where it's almost all the way stripped, but not quite like someone bailed yeah, like yeah, part yeah, way yeah, through the, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So the top of it is, is all stripped down to the wood, but then the bottom of it, you know, like maybe where you wouldn't touch it as much is the original color, which was black or white or fiesta yeah, or, you know what i mean yeah, yeah, that could yeah, be something yeah, really yeah. cool where that where that just it, the paint kind of you see a bit of it at the bottom yeah anyway i don't know but oh, that's what it's a so hole, exciting man. what a rabbit hole <laughs> but great though isn't it so fun to sort of like mess oh, around so with these things i will yes. say to everybody that's listening it's it makes it way more fun if you've got a project in mind for it like it really does like mm. i've been down these like a musical project yeah like you've got a musical project yes. actually in mind for it or yeah i think it's just like a it's it adds a, a whole completely different dimension to your thought patterns you're like oh 100 well, yeah like so for this bass for instance I know that I'm playing with Simon King. We've got the Divine King project. Some of the lines that are written are incredibly hard to play. I yep. really struggle. I'll, I'll tell you straight up. So I've got an Alinto P bass, which is the best P bass I've got. Actually, it's it's the greatest P bass I've got. Um, it's so sick. It's so sick, isn't it? And but I cannot play the lines for the album on that bass. Physically, why? Because the the bridge space is too wide. It's just just too wide. It's uh, yeah. It's just too wide, and it's it's one millimeter too wide actually. And I just cannot do it. Can't do it. Tried. You just it ends up just sounding like waffle. 
It's just, and it sounds messy. You can't get that super clean. Well, there's various yes. things. I think that the string space in the bridge is 20 mil, and on the mm-hmm. F bass, it's 19 mil. That makes a difference. I know it's one mil, but it does make a difference when you're playing those crazy lines. 18 mil would probably yep. be even more comfortable for something like that. Yep. So yep. 18 mil. Um, and also, it's got that bridge pickup that I can the F bass has got that bridge pickup that has the pickup right underneath it. The surface. It's got that surface yes. underneath it so I can play super silky on top of it. And on the P bass, nothing, just gaping holes. <laughs> just, just a chasm. A chasm, yes. right? So it's, it's <laughs> yes. really challenging, well, almost impossible for me yeah. to play those lines on, on that bass. So, yeah, so to, Dude, to my point, that's what's been really uh, fun, trying to figure out, oh, I want this P bass sound, but I need to be able to play those lines on this bass, like what do I need to do to it to make that happen? I love too that you are making you are making an instrument that is exactly what you want for a target. Yeah. Which is so cool. It's very different than how I have specced out some instruments where I, I've been sort of thinking about like who would want this also other than me, but but sometimes then I go, oh, man, I, I kind of wish that I would have, you know, just gone hard after it and like, you know, and really pushed for this particular thing. Yeah, but yeah. I love I love this idea that like you're making a truly signature thing that is going to be very specific toward a certain era in time for you, a certain project in time for you. And I think if if constructed like if the narrative is constructed correctly you know and you get those features right there will be people that are like holy crap i have never considered a pj because i would never use that bridge pickup because the the tone of it or the volume of it or the low end support of it is wrong but because you've thought about it and you're actually putting it into use it's going to be um useful for other people as well and you'll bring people around to your side of thinking (laughs) I think so. Yeah, man. I think so. I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Um, Yeah, dude. I'm really excited about it. Fast forward a few months. I'll just have a, it'll just be a P. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, I I really want to make an instrument. I can do, I can do it on. I can, I can do it. I can have that P bass tone. And then when I need it, I can get that cut in bridge tone, tone dial back a little bit. But to your point, but that has like that, more supportive of bottom end it's sort of like wound in a certain way <coughs> yes it, yeah that it's like a thick a thick yes real thick bridge tone to me to that would come with a preamp to me trying to <coughs> wind a bridge pickup for more low end get uh cannibalizes what a bridge pickup is Got it. so for me if if i were if i were pitching you if i were the person making this bass i would say single coil bridge pickup jazz bass thing attached to a preamp that's boosting bottom and support in the right way yeah um and then experimenting with that a little bit like let's try it at 80 let's try it at 90 100 120 let's find that band of boost that's going to give you that thing where you go oh shit that's really nice right and then you either have it as a setting on the top of the bass or you bake it in you know internally to the preamp that when you kick back there it's sort of pre-boosted in that way yeah um i think that's what i would that's what i would would point you toward assuming that you disconnect that circuit from the p pickup as well you wouldn't have the p pickup running through absolutely yeah yeah it would have sent exactly right so you would have a, a preamp that just was on that back pickup. Oh, that's really And then, inter- and then maybe there's a, even a separate preamp really that is for the P pickup that has controls. But um, I think I think it could be done, and I think it would be amazing. Uh, and you could do the controls the way you wanted to, where it was you could have as much flexibility on the top of the bass or not as you wanted. And I think that would be very cool and compelling. Yeah, what are the controls on the top of the bass? Well, what are they? What do you reach for? You reach for volume. You're going to reach for some kind of pickup. Uh, I don't know if it's a switch or if it's a blend for you. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. Um, and then it's a tone control, right? Damn right. It's a tone control. <laughs> is that right? Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I need that tone control. I'm always fiddling with that thing. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. And I think maybe that tone control affects both pickups, correct? So that you can get... Oh, yeah. Big uh, time. You can roll the tone back on the P, but also on the J pickup. Um, the volume, of course, affects both. It's, you know, it's a master volume. And then I wonder if it's a switch. I don't know if you like switches or you'd rather have a knob for the pickup blend. The You know, the pickup selection. Yeah. How do you want to do that? Probably a blend. You want to have a three-way? Yeah. Like, I'd probably have a blend because I'd worry that with a switch, there'd be, there'd be some secret sauce that I might miss out on. Like, what happens if you're just like, oh. Like, in between. Yeah, yeah. Like, what happens if there's like this in between that just yeah. kills it? But I never know about it because I put a switch yes. in there. Yeah. So it's like master yep, volume, yep. Then blend, the, yeah. Blend, um, and then tone, master tone. Yeah. But the but the secret sauce inside the bass is that there is a preset for the jazz pickup that's boosting bottom in a really pleasant way. Yeah. That would be so sick. I think the whole circuit would be active. To get a blend to work properly, it needs to be an active circuit. Oh. So your P pickup would also be running through an active circuit. Um, because it, it doesn't, it essentially is a switch. If you put a blend on a passive bass, it essentially, you turn it a tiny bit and it just cracks ah, to the next. There's no okay, in between. Okay. Okay. Got but it. on an active circuit, you do actually get blendability. So you have center detent and then you can, you know, move either direction and get those cool in between sounds, which got, I think what, is really cool. What about really two cool. volumes then? What about two volumes? You could absolutely do two volumes. You do like volume, volume, tone then, right? Yeah. You, you know, just like a classic three-way jazz bass, you could absolutely do that. Um, and then you could get, you know, all that, that standard jazz bass configuration. You could totally do that and then still have a preamp attached and to the still have a preamp yeah, the attached J to the J yeah. pickup. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think it, like I have done a and lot And the person of that you're going to talk to about... Go on, go on. Oh, I was going to, the person that you're going to talk to about building this knows a lot about this. Oh, great. Also. So it's all good. <laughs> you don't know who's building yes. this to you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, that's true. I have no idea. <laughs> Dude, let's call it. We're one hour oh. 20 in. We went down a rabbit oh. hole. Thank you for everybody listening in. Um, this is what we talk about <laughs> this 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 conversation is it's basically a great representation of what ian and i talk about every week <laughs> <We're just> so, <laughs> so true we just love bases uh, it's hey, the best. yeah and if these guys are still <laughs> here they, they, they love it too so yeah shout out to all the listeners we, we sure love you do, guys yeah. um hey we've not said it in a while but man if you uh, man i'm saying man but like you know man, men and women um if you want to go leave us a review <laughs> yeah. for the, for the, for the podcast, we would really, really appreciate that. So you can do that, you know, go leave us a, a, a review. Let us know what you think about it. We read all the reviews, obviously. Um, and yeah, I think that, I think that's it. I think we did it, man. Oh, it's so much fun. You guys, thanks for listening. Yeah. We're, we're going to be back with you next week. I think so. See you later guys. Take it easy. Bye. <laughs> Take care, everybody.